between the rivers under the shadow of the mountains. The lights of the valley flickered as creativity exploded. Chill TV. Your TV, your way. Hi, my name is Darren Bosch and I am the President of the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce. We are here today conducting an interview series with our mayoral candidates for the 2018 election. We will hear their views on issues affecting business in Chilliwack. We hope you enjoy it and are informed by the series presented to you by the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce and Chill TV. Question 1. In a recent survey, 67% of respondents believe the quality of life in Chilliwack has worsened in the last five years, and 50% feel it may get worse from here. What is your response? And if elected, what will you do to turn this perception around? Financial security, job satisfaction, family life, health and safety have all been affected. Though I believe things are worse as well, a lot of, um, a lot of things come from a federal and provincial level. On a municipal level, I believe um, a lot of how we are feeling is coming from the crime and coming from actually viewing the homeless on the streets. I want people to feel safe in Chilliwack. I want people to be able to call it home. And all of my policies are aimed toward uh, supporting those things. Yeah, quality of life is, is a challenging topic. Obviously, it, it encompasses a, a whole variety of items. But, um, but I think that perception is fair. I think that we have dropped the ball on delivering services to our community. and. Um, we need to start with dealing with our major issues like homelessness and housing um, before we can start tackling things like parks uh, and trails and transportation networks and all of those things in my mind encompass quality of life and so um, that would be my aim is to to take that comprehensive approach and, and deal with these things for our community because if we're not a desirable place to live then um, in today's economy people will move elsewhere. I think for most people in the city of Chilliwack uh, the quality of life is great they're able to enjoy the first class amenities that we have here in Chilliwack that are the envy of many municipalities. They take advantage of the trails and the recreational activities that we have, cultural activities. There are some who uh, are not in that place right now. I know that housing prices have really uh, been tough for people who want to own a home and uh, also people who want to rent are affected by the prices of homes. And then of course there's the homeless that are on the street that are in our parks and on our sidewalks. And I need to tell you that I'm working really hard on that through my work with UBCM the Union of BC Municipalities, I've been able to influence some of the direction that the provincial government is going and uh, I know that we've been able to secure lots of housing for people right now who are on the street, people right here in Chilliwack and that is coming 92 units. Certainly that's a big number and, and, and thanks for asking. Um, it's been a, a, a real series of, of, of things that have happened. Uh, the, migration of, of some homeless folks have come into our town and, and, and added to the perception. Um, for sure for downtown, I would uh, like to get some uh, beat cops 24-7 uh, to have a real, real presence in our downtown to keep these folks moving. Um, it's not illegal to be homeless. That's, that's a perception that people think that they're not allowed to be there. It's not illegal, but it's something that I would certainly like to clean up and address. Well, I do believe the people, it is getting worse. I've lived here all my life and it hasn't been getting better. To help them getting the place better, housing has to be done. We need housing. I've got friends that are living on the street, so we have to get stuff done for them. Rehab is a number one thing that I need to do. We have to get rehab done. I can't see these people sitting around on our streets doing drugs openly and the people of this town do not like it. They're afraid to walk into town. They're afraid to take their kids to school and something has to be done now. Question two. As a candidate, 
What is your view on property taxes in Chilliwack? Do they need to increase, decrease, or stay the same, and why? I would like to see them. I, I don't think they should be increased. Definitely not increased. Being the same, I can handle that as a property owner. You know, it's not that outrageously priced. Uh, the people that are house owners and have a hard issue putting food on their plates, it would be nice to be able to help them out. I don't know how we could do that, but if there is a will, there is a way. I am here to help the people. Yeah, this is the most challenging topic in local government. It's, uh, and it's, and it's uh, not a fun place to, to be, in, in my opinion. Um, but I'll give you an example. I had a, I had a respondent today to a, to a couple questions I put out on social media. Asked me about um, what he should be doing. His business has been broken into 20 times in the last year. He's put in place bars and security cameras and he has staff who don't feel comfortable working late hours and closing his store. That is the real cost of underservicing our community. And in my opinion, um, a respondent like that, if we show them a value proposition of, of not a massive increase in taxes, I would never advocate for that but a measured approach to deal with our issues. It costs money to deal with issues. And so if we look at something like a, um, a $1 uh, million dollar increase in revenue for the city of Chilliwack, the average home taxes in Chilliwack will go up by $24 per year. And I believe that that is a very reasonable approach. And with that, we can hire five RCMP officers full-time, six RCMP officers full-time. And those are the kinds of things that we need to show the community when we start talking about value. So, I do believe that we need to see a small increase in our taxes over time in a way that's absorbable, but, um, but nothing dramatic. Um, there are economic impacts to raising taxes uh, too much too soon. No one wants to raise the taxes, but we do need to be realistic. Our city is growing and our homeless population has grown 203% from 2014 to 2017. That's more than the population growth coming into Chilliwack during that time. I don't want to raise the taxes, I don't, but that, will, that won't be my first option for sure. But certainly, I want to find um, how they've been spending some of the money, like our dike, the dike on Young Street. Now we have a lawsuit against the city, 10 to 15 people have put a lawsuit against the city of Chilliwack, and I believe that the dike isn't even finished. So that's, that's a really important issue for me, and I know for the people on Young Street as well. I certainly will not be encouraging some metal flowers off of Young Street. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to misspend um, tax money, so I, I think you have to be careful there. But I think I, I, I appreciate the art that's there on, on Evans Road, but I would have preferred to see um, that we're an unceded land of the Stolo Nation. I would have preferred to see something there, uh, a piece for the Indigenous people, for sure. I would certainly like them to stay the same. I like our pay as we go. I think our amenities that, that, that we have had built and are building like the curling rink are going to be pieces of amenities that are going to be paid for. I think it is going to, uh, um, the, the part about building the economy is on the business side and that will increase our tax base. So no, I am a, a proponent of keeping our taxes low. So I've been privileged to be in City Hall on the day when people have to pay their property taxes. And I can tell you, I have never heard anyone say that they want higher property taxes. As a matter of fact, businesses pay 2.2 what a regular homeowner pays. So for them, higher taxes can actually uh, torpedo their business. So I'm very careful about this. I'm a very strong advocate at the table to keep our taxes low. We have the lowest taxes in the lower mainland. That's why businesses coming to Chilliwack, like Molson's, Berry Hill Farms, other businesses as well. And uh, we have no debt. We pay as you go and have a 10 year comprehensive municipal plan. That's what I want to see happen. I want to see us pay and I want to see us pay as we go. And I want us to never incur debt. Question three. What do you believe are the top three investment priorities for our municipality? Yeah, uh, Chilliwack needs to invest in, uh, in infrastructure um, in ways that um, we can. We have been doing that over the last four years, um, but, but our roadways are, are vastly under capacity. Uh, we're seeing that. Um, we need to be investing in, um, I think, a bit of a different strategy as well to attract businesses. 
in having a conversation about uh, about this whole topic with with a handful of business owners, I think the the framework has shifted around what what the infrastructure is that businesses require. Heavy industry requires in ground services and land zoning. Small businesses need street festivals. They need beautiful streetscapes. They need a safe environment for pedestrians to walk to their to their businesses. I think those are places we need to invest, and we will get a return on investment in the business sector certainly. So the first priority has to be public safety and policing. You know, we've invested a lot in policing in the city of Chilliwack. We used to hire two police officers a year, but in the last two years, we've hired over 15. And I really have been a strong advocate for that around the council table. People have the right to feel safe in their own community. And so it's not a cheap endeavor. Every single RCMP member costs $168,000. So uh, in fact, uh, that is one of the main drivers in our budget and we have to be careful. So we balance it off as well. We have bylaw that have been part of that and they are now doing daily sweeps in the downtown area for sure and uh, trying to make sure that people feel safe in their home. So the second issue, would be housing for sure. For people who do not have housing right now, they do not belong in our parks, they don't belong on our sidewalks, we need to build housing and I'm a fierce advocate for that at the provincial level. And the third one I would say would be infrastructure. You know, we have built bike paths and pedestrian walkways, but really cars right now, we have to be honest about this, are the main form of transportation. So there's some areas in Chilliwack that need additional TLC and we need to get people moving from point A to point B, as well as the widening of Highway 1. Economic development, job creation, business retention, uh, including small business expansion um, and attraction to Chilliwack, and that includes the tourism and the gondola off of the uh, Mount Cham. So that's the one. Number two is housing supply and development, affordable housing for seniors, low income, uh, getting our homeless into a proper facility for sure, and biogas, turning manure into renewable energy. Number one would be social housing, of course, housing we need for everybody. Number two, I hear a lot about hospitals. We need more places for us to go. We have these clinics that are open only a couple of hours out of the day. You go to the hospital, they're busy, you're waiting hours and hours and hours. And that I would like to see a bigger hospital or more invested into our hospital to help the people. Uh, the other thing would be uh, schooling. We need more schools. I see that we're going to build another one down in the south part of uh, Webster Landing area, which would be a good investment. But with all the housing that is going on the eastern side of town, up and around the Annis, uh, Annis Road area, I do believe, there's two, three hundred houses scheduled for up there. We need some type of schooling in that area of town too. More fire departments would be nice. Another one would be awesome. Another ambulance facility would be awesome too. It's something that we need and it would be something worthwhile investing in because we're all going to use them. Well, certainly we need to put more money into our road rehab, especially up in our rural areas. I would like to see an increase in our police force, especially in our downtown core uh, and, and continue attracting uh, businesses such as Molson's to our area to attract more young young families to come in and and set up their homes here in Chilliwack. Question four. Based on a recent survey, the top three concerns for residents of Chilliwack are policing and public safety, social housing and poverty reduction, local road maintenance and traffic management. If elected, how would you address these top three issues? Policing and public safety. Advocate on a provincial and federal level for tougher conditions upon release from prison. Support at a municipal level, the RCMP funding specifically for staffing and improving RCMP response times. Social housing and poverty uh, reduction, faster turnaround times, in issuing permits for developers, applications and rezoning applications. Increased number of high density buildings, such as micro apartments, advocating for supportive housing to the provincial government and BC housing for low, for low income singles, couples and families, as well as seniors and those with disabilities. 
homeowner incentives for legal suites and a 24-hour drop-in center for, uh, or a shelter for the homeless. Oh, and number three, <laughs> local road maintenance and traffic management. We are responsible for building and maintaining our roads, sidewalks, and public spaces, managing how city streets are used. We have to be a prepared city, not just for those that are able-bodied, but also for senior citizens and people with disabilities and our youth. That would have prevented Matthew Jarvis's death on the train tracks on Broadway Street. Okay, yes, uh, social housing, we need help with provincial and federal government. We need help with our community. Everybody needs to get involved to get these people into nice places and at reasonable. Uh, I don't think we need to build any more out. We're building too far out into the valleys and into our mountains. I would like to see our housing go up. Uh, road maintenance has to be done, has to be done all the time, not just during election time, like now when all these roads are getting repaved, we need to do roads that need to be done, not just the ones that are getting done four times in five years. Uh, Main Street, big road, our main road hasn't been done in 20 years. Policing in this town, I don't think more police will be the, the correct answer. At uh, big money that they get, you hire 10 of them, that's $1.3 million where we could hire 32 professional security guards at $20 an hour and have these people do their job, walk the beat at night. That's the time that we need it at. Help control the theft and the people running around doing what they do. Those are issues that are facing our city. Uh, um, doing, doing nothing isn't going to work. Um, the work that I've done on the social side has been I feel a big, huge step in the right direction. Early 19, there's going to be some real substantial social housing builds here with the supports that are needed, which I'm sure are going to help what people are seeing downtown. Of course, the infrastructure side, we need to put more money into our road systems. There's no question. It, it, uh, especially in rural areas, it's, it's, a, it's a need, and I've been asked over and over again, and I would certainly like to put more money there. And of course, the police force. I think we talked about that already. Uh, an increase in the force um, is, is something that is needed. If you, if you take uh, Surrey as an example and, and compare it to Chilliwack per capita, our guys have more file counts than they do in Surrey. That's got to change. Yeah, it's uh, played into my hand nicely. My, my campaign strategy came out um, uh, three months ago and was informed by my last four years on council. But those are my top three platform planks in my platform and um, I think they're all really interconnected. People see the symptoms of our failure to deal with problems. So they see homelessness on the streets, they see um, their selves or friends and, and, and relatives unable to afford housing. We have to come up with a comprehensive housing strategy that is better than what we have. We have to deal with policing challenges in a very real way, which is service levels, or perhaps looking at a municipal police force. And we also need to dramatically increase the way in which we service our uh, down and out populations in Chilliwack. Because so long as we don't deal with a certain cohort of the population, they will continue to affect every life in Chilliwack. We're, we're 100,000 people. Um, and our street homeless population of a few hundred has a massive impact on the quality of life for citizens throughout our community in every neighborhood. So infrastructure, first of all, we are a car-based society. We have built bike lanes, we have built sidewalks, but we do need to increase this capacity of our roads. So we'll be widening our roads from uh, Watson down to Keith Wilson, that stretch on better four lanes and we're also widening the road on promontory to four lanes as well and fixing that intersection up so that's one but there are many more that we need to do we have a 10-year plan we're going to get it done as far as social housing goes it's really important that we keep advocating for social housing like this is a provincial issue but if we're not knocking on the doors of the ministers that will make a difference and on bc housing store we won't get any success and we are seeing success i've been able to successfully advocate and we have 92 modular units coming for those who are homeless right now homeless in the city of chilliwack chilliwack residents and policing, absolutely, we need to add more police. Boots on the ground is what people are asking for, and that's what we need. We hired 15 over the last two years, where before we'd only hired two a year, and uh, they are doing remarkable jobs in their sweeps of downtown Chilliwack and in helping business owners and residents feel safe.
Question five. In a recent survey, 73% believe our policing resources are inadequate. 56% support the establishment of a regional police force as opposed to the current RCMP. What is your response to this? I feel that our police force is adequate with just a few add-on officers, especially in our downtown core and in our Sardis core. We did check into the cost of a, a city police force. Um, the cost was was through the roof. If we were to go that route, I would like to put that out to the community to say what they would like to do, because of course there would, there would be a difference in our taxes. We, we would have to find the money someplace to pay for this force, but um, I feel we are trending in the right direction with the force that we have on hand right now. Well, I think more studies have to be done. I know that Richmond City did a study of this and they found that they could not afford to let go of the RCMP. It was extremely expensive uh, in divestment of buildings and all of the kind of uh, legal repercussions that happen when you try to have a new police force. I think there has to be a regional response and a regional determination as to how we go forward in public safety. Uh, the other thing that people may not know about um, municipal police force is that uh, it, it, the municipality really doesn't have any say in a municipal police force. It, there are people who are appointed and uh, to that board and the municipality gets one vote on the board. So it may not be the panacea. We also talked about the cost of municipal policing versus RCMP and at this point with um, dollars and cents the RCMP are winning. If it is better for the community I would support it. If it is cheaper and in the long run and if they are actually going to come out and help when we call them I would support that 100%. As it is now with the policing, they seem to be too busy for just the little guy. Too many B&Es, they don't want to come and help. We got the guy in the garage, he's here, come and help. No, sorry, we're too busy. So with com community policing, that may be a way better way to go, depending on what it's going to cost us. Me, I'm a cheap guy. I like, I like my money. You know, I like my money. I, I don't want to waste it. And being that I would be using your money, I don't want to waste it. So if it is a better way to go, awesome. If not, we'll keep going the way we are and bring in more security. Uh, municipal police only have jurisdiction in their own municipalities and the RCMP are federal police. So they have jurisdiction anywhere in Canada and anywhere that they are sent to. I am for keeping the RCMP. I think that our policing challenges in our community are very real and, and a response to your survey like that indicates that it's being felt by citizens of Chilliwack and so um, I want to move towards doing a comprehensive review of all of our policing. So whether that increases service levels for the RCMP or it's a move to a municipal police force, there's pros and cons to both and obviously um, a move to a municipal police force would take place over time. Um, it wouldn't happen next year but I think if, unless we're willing to look at every option on the table, then we're not servicing our community properly. So we have to come up with a better strategy. Everyone in Chilliwack, I think, realizes that what we're doing is not working. And, uh, and so we need to do better, and I think we can. Question six. Here's a comment from our recent survey. The planning of residential development seems to be focused on overbuilding, especially on the hills, without regard for necessary supports such as schools or arterial roads. How do you respond to this? Well, I would say I think that's a little bit of a perception. When we did our official community plan, uh, we planned for what was to happen in places like Promontory, and there's still about 700 homes that are left in the OCP to be built in that area. But the observation about uh, the amenities keeping up the schools, um, that's a great one. And it's one that is constrained by the Ministry of Education. They're the ones who have to approve schools in particular. So uh, as you probably know, there is a new school that is being built with $48 million from the province that is brand new um, announced and it couldn't come any sooner. I mean, we're so grateful for that. But uh, yes, we have constant communication with the people like school district to make sure that we're building in the right areas and planning. The bad thing is we can't stop growth, so we have to plan ahead and make sure that we have responsible growth in our community. Um, I acknowledge and certainly sympathize with those living in the high residential areas of Garrison, Promontory and Vetter. 
Um, I, I believe that we should probably have a task force, get somebody together and figure out if we could do different, uh, different ways of, uh, different solutions of fixing that, that problem that's been happening up there for sure. Um, I support and encourage school boards also to look at the distribution and the breakdown of students and uh, looking at maybe keeping children in their own catchment and looking at the breakdown of what is elementary, middle school, senior school, and how we use those buildings and how we resource those to the best of our ability. Uh, it comes down to Chilliwack's strategy around the way in which we fund infrastructure. We're one of the only communities, and we love to tote this as a strength, that, um, that has a no debt, pay as you go philosophy. Every other community doesn't do that for very good reasons, because we should be building infrastructure ahead of development. And, and then all new development in an area, for instance, Promontory is a really good example with only two access roads, then all of that new development funds back to the city and covers the costs of that upfront infrastructure. The cost of the taxpayers is the same, but the service delivery in the interim is way higher. And I think that we need to start looking at planning a city around rapid growth because we're seeing it and, and we're now seeing the challenges that come with building uh, Vetter Road after we need it of building infrastructure after we need it, of, of building our fire and police and all these other services afterwards. Um, most other municipalities borrow money on specific topics tied to specific files to deliver that service and then the community as it grows pays back into those services. It's a much better service delivery model and it's what most other communities do for very good reasons. My response to that would be we need more schooling, more, more ambulance, more more uh, fire department, stuff like that for these areas. And if uh, me personally, I would rather see stuff be built up, not out. And uh, we can get more people living in a one, a denser area and have more people coming to our town and actually living properly, I would hope. And with more schooling, we can do that. With extra fire departments, we can do that. With more hospitals or a bigger hospital, it would help 300%. And if there's anything that I can do to help the people accomplish this, I'm going to try and do that. Because like I say, it's all about the people. It's not about me, it's about you and everybody else out there. Well, certainly th there is an issue in our schools. Uh, we have currently 93 portables in our community, which I think is, is, is inadequate use of school space. I think what we need to do is, is, is have more collaboration with our school board folks and, and, and work alongside them. Uh, as, as we grow, they need to grow. And it's all about collaboration to, to uh, uh, push our higher levels of government to help us out. Chilliwack is growing and growing at a fast pace. I believe it's like a school a year that we're growing. As far as the infrastructure, again, I've stated that before, uh, I would like to put more money into it. Um, a plan that I would like to do is to fast track the widening of, of Press Road to have it a safer road up and down out of that promontory area, which is our fastest growing area of Chilliwack. Question seven. Does your vision for the future for Chilliwack include any specific adjustments to the official community plan or changes to the agricultural land reserve? If so, how would you accomplish this? I think the OCP is a pretty solid document. It is a, 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 a moving flexible document, but not taking land out of the ALR. We need to protect our lands. That's where a lot of our food base comes out of. That's why you see the building up on the eastern hillsides so, so concentrated because Chilock is a farming community and I do want to protect that. Taking land out of the ALR is not preferable for sure. Um, it's an important part of Chilliwack's landscape, economy and our tourism. They put a lot of work into that plan and the best and brightest people and the best and brightest minds have put that together. Ultimately, I'd be sticking to the plan. My interpretation might deviate a little bit from the current council, um, but I think in the end we are all headed towards the same goal. Uh, it does, absolutely. Um, the OCP obviously is our guiding document for the community and I don't think that our OCP is forward thinking enough. I don't think that it is 
uh, comprehensive enough. We're doing a regional growth strategy review at the regional district right now, and we are realizing in that process that Chillox OCP is not going to be adequate. But on farmland, I do not support the removal of any further farmland. But what we know is that along our urban-rural divide, there's a huge amount of speculation. So people are anticipating that we're going to adjust our OCP. And they're holding land for that purpose, which drives up the cost of foodstuffs. It makes farming unaffordable. It has a lot of downstream challenges. So we need to draw a firm line on the ALR, design our community around that, and then urbanize as though the farmland does not exist as an option for further development. And in that, we will protect agriculture and the huge agricultural sector, which drives our economy. But we're also going to build a denser, um, more livable uh, community in our urban cores, which is easier for service provision of RCMP, fire staffing. We can provide better transit services, uh, proximity, walkability in our community. All these lifestyle pieces are also then bolstered because the more extensive your road network is and the more sprawled your community is, the harder it is to provide services as a municipality. I'm really proud of the official community plan and I think it's serving us uh, well. It is a living, breathing document, so as issues come up, we can be nimble enough to be able to change it. The issue I hear a lot, particularly from the business community, is that we're running out of industrial land. In 1972, the Agricultural Land Commission started to draw lines around our community and some of the land that they drew lines around is not arable land, it's not suitable for farming. So we are having those kind of discussions with the Agricultural Land Commission uh, trying to see if some of that land that cannot grow anything could be released for industrial land. Why is that important? People need jobs. They need to have a quality of life in our city and we need to be working consistently and uh, daily to make sure that their views are heard as well. Well, our, the, the plan of the city I'm not too sure with. I'm a business owner, I'm not into politics, I don't know much about what's going on. If I do get in, I'm sure I'm going to learn about it real quick. And whatever I can do to help the community, that's what I'm here for. ALR, no way, leave it alone, that is our food. If we keep taking away from our food, what do we got? Absolutely nothing. So let's keep it the way it is. And obviously I will look more into the community planning. And I only see the city getting bigger and hopefully it's brighter.
Hi, I'm Barris Carden, president of Chill TV. Chill TV specializes in Chilliwack. We're here to help entrepreneurs, businesses, organizations, and the creative community get their message out to their constituents. We do it by sitting down with you and creating your own TV show. We develop it with you, cast it wherever possible using your own staff or family and friends to keep costs down. Script it, film, edit, and produce it, and then help you distribute it to your database through your own social media, email, and website. Boom, you're a local celebrity. The content then resides on chilltv.ca, the simple place to go to find local content for the local marketplace. So your video is searchable by locals. I look forward to speaking with you because I'm sure you have some questions. Chill TV, your TV, your way. In between the rivers under the shadow of the mountains, the lights of the valley flickered as creativity exploded. Chill TV, your TV, your way.
Waterstone Law Group proudly presents the 2018 Chilliwack Mayoral All Candidates Debate. Brought to you by Waterstone Law Group. And All Things Being Eco on Vetter. And 89.5 The Drive. Hosted by the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce and the Downtown Business Improvement Association. And now please stand by for Chill TV's official live stream of the debate. You're aware there'll be a little pause before we get started. We still have a big lineup coming in, so we'll be starting in about five to ten minutes. Thank you.
Hello, Chilliwack. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome. Wow. Thank you all for coming out. It's, uh, we, had a, we had a sold out registration, and so I still see a few empty seats. So obviously, they either decided to tune in at home on chilltv.ca or they're still coming. So first of all, I want to welcome you all for coming here and thank you for making this so important and coming out and getting informed and engaging and making Chilliwack a great and a better place to live. And also, I want to welcome anybody who's uh, viewing this live at chilltv.ca. So if any of you do have friends or family that are not here but wanted to be here and you know, couldn't get registered or got turned away at the door, whatever, whatever it was, tell them to tune in to chill, chilltv.ca. Send them a message. Um, and uh, they can watch it and also tom tomorrow the day after it's it'll be up there queued up and ready for you to watch it again who was here last week for the councillors debate wow pretty good number that's great last last week we had almost 500 people in the cultural center here we had over uh, nearly 300 people watching it live while the event was going on and since then the online video has over 30 or nearly 3500 views so do the math that's 4,000 and some odd viewers. We only had 9,400 voters show up last election. We've got 40 to 50 percent of the, potentially 40 to 50 percent of the voters are tuning into the debates. That's engagement. So just before I get into, you're going to hear me for about 10 or 15 minutes as I drone on about some stuff. We've got some pretty cool technology we're using to help the debate. And I want to explain that all to you to make sure everybody can get involved. But on October 20 is the election date. Chill TV has labeled that as the Chilliwack Chooses date. So on October 20, Chilliwack Chooses, 7.30 p.m., streaming live on chilltv.ca is live election results with a panel discussing the election results as they come in. Chilltv.ca and Waterstone Law Group is the presenting sponsor on October 20 for that. Speaking of sponsors, first thing I want to do is thank the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce for co-hosting this event and making this all possible tonight. So let's give Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce a round of applause. and the Downtown Chilliwack Business Improvement so Association co-hosting as well. And finally, I've said their name many times, chilltv.ca. Thank you. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm William Clausen, and I'm honored and privileged to serve Chilliwack as a director on the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce and also honored to be your moderator and MC for tonight. Thank you. <laughs> election. This is a big election. For probably many reasons for each of you. We have a, a few reasons as well. Tonight, five candidates are going to speak to why they're vying for one position as mayor of Chilliwack for the next four years. Last week, we had 14 candidates vying for six counseling six counselor positions regardless of the outcome of the election our next mayor has to lead a group of a minimum 50 percent new cha new faces and change on council that alone is going to present challenges and opportunities and all that that's big for chilliwack also it's it's big because we live in a lot of uncertain times right now i know that's cliche but we live in financial uncertain times. We only have to look at the last three days of the global stock market of what's happening. We're not living in stable times, economically, financially, and socially. Regardless of global or whatever level those issues are, they will trickle down into Chilliwack. And you're here tonight to be informed and be engaged and ask what is our leader, our, our voted leader, going to do with their council and how are they going to make Chilliwack and continue to make Chilliwack a great place to live. So thank you for coming out as well. Yes, thank you. So, so speaking of issues, we need to talk about a couple things. There is a lot of issues that are really relevant for a lot of the things that we do. And we're the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce and the Downtown Chilliwack Business Improvement Association. And obviously our goal is to make and keep Chilliwack a great place to do business in. 
which also means it's a great place to live, a place where we're going to raise our kids, a place where generations and generations to come are going to come and be honored and proud to call Chilliwack home. And we want that place, and that place starts today. So there are issues floating around out there and that are very relevant. However, they're not the topic of tonight's debate. And I'm going to call a couple of them out. You're going to have the chance to ask questions. And many of you did. I believe we're, last week, last week we fielded 171 questions. We voted 15 to the top. No, you voted 15 to the top. And we addressed those issues. It wouldn't surprise me if we have that many questions already. And if you haven't done that, I'm going to tell you how to do that in a minute. So, we are moderating those questions. And we are moderating those questions with our mandate in mind. So tonight, I'm going to tell you the reason why. We're not taking any questions that are related to the SOGI issue. Okay? And here's our reasons. Number one is the mayor and council have no jurisdiction in that field. They have no ability to create policies that will influence that decision. But you say, well their personal viewpoint is important, and we, and we believe that. So we're asking if you can respectfully reach out to that candidate when you have time, reach out to their platform, send them an email, and ask them their views on that topic. It wouldn't be fair to give them one minute, randomly, to talk about such a polarizing issue. And also, we're also moderating questions that are dealing directly, and, I, and I'm not speaking to any certain person or anything, but any questions that have to do with unfound or unproven allegations. And we're going to moderate those questions because why do we do that? First of all, is this simply isn't fair to anyone. We don't have the time. Each candidate's going to speak eight times tonight, and we simply don't have the time to deal with that much. And let's talk about it. Those issues, if they are unproven and unfounded, there's only one thing that we can distill it all down to, and that's speculation. Do we want to talk with our leaders about speculation, or do we want them to come in, have an assertive viewpoint on a topic that's really, um, or really affecting Chilliwack right now, and those are the issues that we want to address tonight to make sure that we can continue to live in Chilliwack. We're a great place to live and continue to make it a great place to do business. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay, that's enough of that. Now let's talk about the format and the technology. Tonight, if you were here last week, it's going to be similar with a little twist. We're going to give each candidate, and I've briefed you all, but this is for you as well. We're going to give each candidate one minute to open, and we're going to do that alphabetically ascending, okay? And they, we, are she, we are seated alphabetically by last name. And that's the tone of the night. This is going to be random. This is going to be, you know, it's going to give everyone a fair chance to do everything. One minute of opening remark. Tell us who you are, whatever you use that one minute for. Then we're going to have six rounds of questions. The first three rounds of questions are general questions that any candidate can answer, and they're really dealing with issues that have to do with Chilliwack and not specific to one candidate, possibly. And any of you who are logging in and asking those questions will have seen that, and I'll explain that in a moment. Then, after three rounds of that, each candidate has spoken four times, and we've heard 12 questions answered by a variety of candidates. Then we're going to go into two rounds of each candidate answering a directed, specific question to that candidate. And we're going to do that randomly as well. So each candidate has a room where you can ask questions, and all these questions are being voted up, and you're telling us which ones are important, and that's both live here, wherever you are. And then we go into our closing round, which is each candidate, and they've been briefed on this, so they'll uh, understand this. They get to speak to one of the previously answered 16 questions that they may not have spoken to. So if one candidate has gotten a question randomly, another candidate says, I'm very passionate about that issue. They get the last round to speak to that question. And they, as I told you earlier, you have a notepad. Last time we kept track of it, but we're not going to do that this time. It's your job to tell us which question you're going to answer in round six. Then we close out with a round of closing remarks, one minute. So it's a minute and a half per question, and it's one minute for opening and closing. Okay, so open, six rounds, close. And how are we going to do that? 
that's where the technology. So pardon me if this is your first time on an iPhone, no judgment there, it, but I will work through it with you and we'll do this. And pardon, and also all of those you've already answered questions, great. Those of you who do not have technology with you, let me get that out of the way first. I have, where's Nicole and Jess? There they are. Nicole and Jess on that side, okay, they're waving, maybe you can stand up and wave. They have your forgotten or not yet owned technology with, you, with them. You can go over to them or wave your hand, sorry. You wave your hand, they will come to you. And over, on this side we have Laura and Taylor. Can you guys wave? And they, you have a question that you don't have the technology for to ask, wave your hand, they'll come up, I'll try to find you as well. They'll come up and ask you, or you can ask them their question and they'll find out if it's in the list already. If it is, great, you, can, you can't vote it up because you don't, it's not your technology, it's theirs. But you can ask a question that's not been asked and then the rest of the audience can vote it up. For those of you who do have your technology with you, is there anybody who wants to ask a question now who doesn't have technology with you? Let's, let's get these people with their iPads. Just wave your hand, no? Right here. Go to slido.com, S-L-I-D-O.com. At slido.com, and if you're not gonna be interactive, that's fine, we are going to do two polls, and they're gonna be good. I promise. Go to slido.com. Even if you're not going to ask a question, I want you to participate in the poll because they're going to be good. I promise. Slido.com. When you go to slido.com, it's going to ask you for an event code. The event code is behind me as well. Hashtag. You don't need to do the hashtag. It's there already. Mayor4. A good chance when you type in Mayor4, it'll already pop up saying, oh, you're looking for the mayor for Chilliwack debate. If not, Type that whole thing out. Mayor, M-A-Y-O-R, the number four, C-H-W-K. Do that on Slido, then join the event. You are now in the event. The event, the first time you log in, will ask you which room do you want to enter. These are the rooms where you get to ask questions. So for the, right now, if it's a general question for the first three rounds, go into the general questions room, and you'll see a whole list of questions come up. A whole list of questions. The top question is the one with the most votes. Last time I checked, the top question had like 35 votes or something. It probably has a lot more now. And when you've come in there, if you don't see your question in that long list of questions, go to the top, type in your question, hit send. And other people can now see your question and vote it up. If you do see the question that's fairly close or, or pretty obvious that it's going to be the same answer or whatever, Vote the question that you see there. Give it a thumbs up. That's how you vote it. Just, uh, it's like a like. You, you just press on the thumbs up button or icon, and now that question has moved up in the ranking. How important is this? Last week in our counselors' debate, we were down to the 13th, 14th question, and I had to start choosing because they were neck and neck, 80, 90 votes per. We appealed to the audience to say, help me out, and they did. And they uh, unanimously voted one of the questions right to the top, and that was the next question that was addressed. This is your debate. That's where you engage. When you want to ask a question that's not a general question, at the very top of that same screen, there's a little drop-down box that says general questions or whatever room you're in. Click on that, and there's your rooms again. And then you can just kind of go back and forth between your rooms. If you're having any trouble and there's no other questions, Laura and Taylor and Jess and Nicole, maybe you guys can be available to help people if there's anybody that needs a little bit of help with that. Because it is a little more complicated than we did last week. So again, slido.com, join the event. Mayor for CHWK, go it, join the event. You now have the choice of whatever rooms you want and you can toggle between rooms at the top of your screen if you see a question that you already like, vote it up. If you don't see your question, put it in there. Those questions, as I mentioned, are being moderated. Why? Because there's simply a lot of questions that come in that have already been asked. There's questions related to the issues that I talked about that we're moderating out. And there may be somebody, there always is a class clown in the class that's going to put a username or a question that is, is not appropriate in terms of, you know, it has, it's, it's irrelevant to what's happening and it might have to do something with my lack of hair or whatever it is. And we moderate those out too, okay? That's for my protection only. 
So at that point, I think you've got the technology down. Just one quick thing. We use a piece of software called Team Generator that will be generating our teams and randomly generating the um, candidates' names for the questions. I will be controlling the screens up here. There's a lot of clicking that I have to do because of the rooms, but I think we've got it down pat, so we'll hope that technology will serve us well again. And without further ado, I think that's all I have to add. Let's get into it. And candidates, for those of you who were here last time, we got rid of the bell. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about the bell. That's a different story. So now what we have is we have this cool timer. It's another piece of technology to a monitor over here. These candidates see a timer. You don't, um, unfortunately, but it's a timer that starts at a minute, a minute and a half. And as it starts timing down at 50 seconds, it starts turning orange, no, green. Green first. 55 sec 45 seconds starts turning green. 55, it starts turning orange. And when it goes red, you're done. And then I hit the door, trap door opens. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, we're going to opening remarks this way, closing remarks this way, okay? So um, let's, uh, Brigida, you get one minute once you start talking, um, Darren starts timing. My name is Brigida Crosby. I am CEO and founder of Cheeky Cherry. I have worked extensively to promote topics such as social justice, equality, international human rights, sexual and gender-based violence, LGBTQ equal rights, women's rights, and domestic and family violence. I am also the owner of Community Angels Home Care and Community Support Services, which assures that every single senior citizen has equal um, access to affordable home care regardless of their financial state. I serve as the director for the Support Service Project, a distress line for seniors and people with disabilities, oh, I'm tired, <laughs> that have been abused, neglected, and are suicidal and for the Not Alone program, realizing that more and more seniors are at risk of becoming elder orphans. I'm the founder of Vigil for Hope for the Missing and Murdered Women, and tonight I'm wearing a t-shirt for Shawnee, Shawnee Inali, and uh, we're also looking for Kelly Rideout. So I'm gonna use this platform for that for a moment and just say that if you have any information regarding those two, to please come forward and put your information to the tip line. At the age of 17, Time's I graduated up, from the nursing Time's program up. in Toronto. Thank you. Incumbent Mayor Sharon Gates. Well, that was really fast. I'd like to first of all acknowledge that we're on Stalo traditional territory, and I want to thank them for the rich heritage that they make to our city as they are people of the river. I want to tell you that I've been doing this for 22 years, 12 years as a city councillor, and 10 years to be proud to be your mayor. I am the first woman mayor in Chilliwack in 100 years. I'm really proud of the work I get to do, but I want to say I'm even more proud of my council. They have worked really hard and do not let one councillor take any credit for all of the work that council does because they work so hard in our community. Could you put your hands together for them? I want to tell you that I have two medals from the Queen, one for service to our community, one for service to all of Canada. And I want to say that I'm going to work hard for you. I am authentic, I love change, and I'm in. Thank you. Ken Popoff. No, my mic's not on. There we go. I first want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank the Chamber and the BIA, and William, you're correct, and thanking you as well, and Darren Bosch. Chilliwack is a great place to live. My name is Ken Popov. I want to come right out and say I'm not a Polish speaker. I am a guy that works hard f for the city. I have worked on some of the toughest social files that we have in front of us. I am not an I guy, and you may hear that at this table. I did this, I did that. You won't hear that from me. I'm a team player. I work with groups. That is my strength. Uh, I've been involved with the CHC for the last four years, and we've created a, a real aura of, of, of help, of people that want to work together moving forward. So, Ken Popov, thank you for everybody for being here. Thank you. Dave Rowan. Hello, my name is Dave Rowan. I wish I had a pocket full of stuff to tell you about uh, me helping the community and doing a lot of community services and work 
like that. But uh, I am the owner of Dave's Towing. I've been doing that since 2004, and I work long hours, 7.30 in the morning. Sometimes I don't get home till 10 o'clock at night. So the time that I spend is uh, a little bit on the street. I do help a few people out there, you know, giving free unlocks, boosts. I've given cars away to people that need them to get back and forth to work. A little bit more about me, I'm a big race fan. I race mud trucks uh, throughout BC. I'm a quarter mile racer in, in Mission, BC. I've taken up obstacle course racing in the last little bit here in uh, Hope, BC and Merritt. And the last little term I've been doing is a bit of gold mining. And uh, of course, I would like to do more for the community. If I'm elected as mayor, I'm going to be out there working for you. Thank you. And incumbent councillor Sam Wellington. Good evening, Chilliwack, and thank you, uh, thank you all for coming out or tuning in at home um, and exercising your democratic right to. Uh, uh, to build your city into a different future. And so, um, for those of you who don't know me, I own a small business here in Chilliwack and employ seven people, uh, and I have for, si for the last six years. And, and I've spent the last term on council um, doing what I can to deliver on the promises that I made during, uh, during my election campaign. Um, I did not shy away from talking about some of the challenging issues I think facing our city and, and, and pointing out, in, in my view, some of the places where I believe we could have done better. And, and I am proud of my last four years on, on council and, and I'm proud of, of the support for a lot of the initiatives that um, this council has rolled out and, and moved forward for our community. But I think that Chilliwack has a lot of unrealized potential. I think we can do far better than we have done. And, uh, and I think that Chilliwack needs to look at ourselves differently. We need to move into a different future, and, uh, and I'm excited for that future, but it's going to require vision and hard work, and I believe a change in leadership. Thank you. Thank you. I almost broke one of my promises. The poll. We have to do a poll. So thanks you for your opening remarks. We're going to get to your questions in a minute. You can look at Slido and find out which question you might get. The top rating question has 152 votes, and I just got told that, yes, we have over 500 people here, and we have nearly 500 people streaming live. Wow. Thank you again. Welcome. Wow. It's a thousand of your voters, and they got five friends with them each watching tonight. There's, the, there's your voting crowd. So the poll, go to slido.com. As soon as I activate the poll, the poll question is going to be coming into this evening, have you decided who you are going to vote for? And there's your question. Can you please answer that? I got one person that has answered it. So the poll should pop up. And there we now have 38, 64, I can't keep up. There is people, that's your answers coming in live as you're doing that. 54% so far have voted yes, I've decided. 41, so that's the half that aren't watching. <laughs> For 52, so we got 251 people, there we go. We beat last, last week's record for how many people are doing our poll, so that's great. I'll just leave it up there for another 40 seconds to a minute. 50%, half of Chilliwack, half of the people polling have decided that they know who they are going to vote for. 43% have said no out of the 377 people so far. Darren, you can only do this once. Oh. <laughs> and we've decided this is working better than the bell already. Okay, another 10 seconds. We got 428. Come on, let's hit, let's hit 500. Anybody out there not, jump into slido.com. We're at 447 people who have polled in. 449, let's at least hit 450. There we go. Slido.com, I'll just leave that up for a sec. Jaron, can you randomly generate our team so I can ask the question and then we'll shut this poll down. As soon as we hit 500, we'll wait. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to shut the poll down in a, in a couple seconds. And so there's about 470 people, 51% of Chilliwack of the people polled have said that they have decided who they are going to vote for. However, here's an interesting poll. Last week, we had 500 people here, so about 800 people watching. Of the people that polled in, 
said that they, their views changed moderately to significantly by the end of the debate. So just want to throw that out there. So we got 496. Oh, we do have to wait for 500. <laughs> 498. Oh, there we go. Thank you. <clears throat> and I'm an overachiever, 505. So we're going to start questions. And the way we're going to do this, I'm only going to ask the question that is so we got 171 votes on the top question. I'm going to announce the candidate or the person who's going to answer that question at the beginning of each question to at least give it as much fairness as we can. So the, the question is, and by the way, when one question drops out and we're still looking for questions, you can vote on another question and keep it up there if you haven't yet voted on it. So our very first question is, Chilliwack is ranked 18th most dangerous city in Canada by McLean's. How will you make us safer to improve and improve our image to attract go growth? And our first is Sam Waddington. You have one and a half minutes to answer these questions. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that statistic reflects what a lot of our, our residents are feeling. Um, they're feeling that their community somehow is, uh, is taken away from them and, and that they're held hostage, I think, a little bit. And, uh, and, those, and those crime rates are real. Uh, we have definitely seen a marked difference in public safety in our community. And a huge part of that is because we're, we're a community that has not tied our RCMP staffing levels to our population growth. Um, and, uh, and historically, that has not served us well. So over this last term, this council has elected to, um, to significantly increase our RCMP staffing levels, but we still aren't tying it to growth. And so my worry is that we're going to get back into a situation where we are underfunded um, for our policing resources. So now is a perfect time, in my opinion, to take a full-scale look at our, at our policing model. We know that a lot of communities across Canada are moving to pol uh, municipal police, um, and I believe that this is something that the City of Chilliwack needs to look at much more closely. We did a high-level pre preliminary review, but nothing like what other communities have done to decide if the RCMP truly is the best model. And if we stick with the RCMP, then we need to significantly increase the resources. It is not the only thing affecting crime, and I will state that openly, um, but it is a significant piece. Um, and while our RCMP are understaffed, it cripples our ability to do lots of other things, attract new businesses, uh, encourage residential growth in certain neighborhoods, um, and ultimately, we know that a very small portion of our population are holding 90 plus thousand people hostage in their, in their homes in the evenings, and people and don't feel safe up. in their parks. Thank you. And next up is incumbent Mayor Sharon Gates. Thank you very much. Well, we do have some really great stats for things like uh, Real Estate Investment Network, where we are in the top 10 in the province, and NAOF, where we get awards for being the most improved. So when you get stats like this, it's completely deflating. So I went to McLean's to figure out how they got that stat. And that stat is because we had five murders last year, and they were from prolific offenders in our community the majority of whom have been arrested. The same number of offenders were in Abbotsford, but Abbotsford, they had five murders, but they were 61st on the list because of their population base. So I think statistics can say different things. Having said that, I do know that the people of the city of Chilliwack deserve to feel safe in their homes. I am grateful for the RCMP that they have their eyes on prolific offenders. It's important. Those prolific offenders do almost 90% of the crime in Chilliwack. So they have curfew checks. They're making sure they know where they are at what time and they have their eyes on them. I think we need to continue. And I think we need to remember that crime has no borders. We're very fortunate with the RCMP to have the integrated uh, task force for gang violence and they come and help us when we have a gang issue in our community like all the other communities do through the lower mainland. I would welcome the opportunity to talk about uh, uh, municipal policing. I have a lot of information on that and if you feel that's a question you want to ask, please do so. Thank you. So for our next question, and this is kind of how the rounds work, the next, uh, uh, randomly generated again, but our next question is the following question, which has been voted up. According to a study, Chilliwack's the most underserved, underserved, sorry, 
According to a study, Chilliwack's the most underserved community in the country for retail square footage per capita. It's great to attract local jobs, but if people leave town to shop, it's not idea. ideal. How will you attract new shoppers or retailers, sorry, new retailers to Chilliwack? And first up is Dave Rowan. Well, to attract new retail, and that, me, me, I'm big on uh, small business. We've got to help them out as much as we can. But to attract uh, small business, it's, it's almost like at home when I was a kid. You know, you got your friend coming over, mother would say, clean your room. You got family coming over, clean the house. You want to invite people into your community to run a business and help the people that are in this community, we have to clean our community first. Let it be the crime, the drugs, whatever it may be, we have to clean that up and that'll help all of us. Thank you. And Ken, pop up. Thank you. Can you say Molson's Coors? Uh, I think you've all probably seen that building by our highway there. It should attract 100 great paying jobs. The city's role as, as attracting businesses at a smaller scale is, is not really our responsibility. It's more on a bigger scale, which we let SEPCO to do that. Um, I am a small business owner myself, and I know the, the, um, the trials and tribulations. I have eight, eight people that I, that I employ. We have the lowest tax base in Chilliwack. That in itself is an attractor. <clears throat> With what's going on downtown, uh, in the next couple of years, um, you are going to see a, a marked change in what's going to happen in small retail. I, I think the malls are, are a thing of the past. I think they're dying. I think the smaller niche kind of stores, which we are going to create in our downtown to create a vibrant downtown, is the way to go. So that is going to be my push, is to keep working with these folks. If, uh, if I can e use an example, if you look at Mill Street, it, it's, a, it's a cool little street. There's, there's little mom and pop shops in there and th that, are, that are doing great. I want to help these folks out and work better with the BIA, with the Chamber, and carrying on to make Chilliwack a better place. Thank you. Thank you. And Brigida. The same question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we must clean up our downtown core first. Uh, so that would include the homeless people, and uh, we've had a huge issue with that. My idea is to open up a 24-hour center. When you do that, then it gives you a space that people can be moved to. And uh, right now, they're just leaving Ruth and Naomi's and the Salvation Army at 7 o'clock in the morning, and then they have no place to go. So you must take care of that issue first, but you must do it in a humane way. And once, you be, once you're able to um, clean up that downtown core, move them into the center, then you're also able to enforce those bylaws. And uh, you know you could put those people in the center, and then it cleans up our downtown. People like that downtown. Um, at the same time, we must attract good doctors to the city as well. So we must we must have like our whole city must be cleaned up, right? So we don't have we don't have a lot of doctors here. We need that as well, and we need to have a little bit better transportation, something more open to Metro Vancouver. Thank you. Thank you. So that's what we call round one. So every candidate has had a chance to speak. We've addressed two questions. We're going to do two more rounds of those. So if you're, if you're out there voting, you can vote up questions in the general. And you know, most of them are getting you know, in the hundreds of votes, 130, 140. So please, if you, have, if you feel a question's relevant, just keep voting. So the next question, and this question refers to last night, which was a Kennedy, all candidates debate. The question is, the council candidates shared their stances on safe injection sites. What is your stance, and is it something you, something you would consider implementing if elected? And first up for this is Sam Waddington. Awesome, thank you. Um, absolutely. And, uh, and the reason for that is, is not based on my preconceived notions of are we enabling or, or should we be tougher on, on illegal substance use. It's a data-driven approach, and that is the approach I would hope that you would expect all of us to make, is to put our preconceived notions aside and look to the facts. We are not the first city to implement this. If that was the question at hand, my answer would probably be different. But we know that in cities that have implemented safe injection sites, that they have pulled the number of people dying of drug overdoses 
um, and they've, they've reduced those statistics. Uh, they have reduced the, the instances of transmission of, of all kinds of diseases, HIV, AIDS, and Hep C, and all of these pieces are very, very real. That harm reduction piece is massive. Now, it is not the silver bullet to dealing with addictions care. We need to go back and deal with the precursors of addiction. We need to deal properly with mental health care. We need to help people through detox. But what we also know is that these become contact centers for service providers. So if somebody goes to a safe injection site as a user to use in a safe injection site, and we wrap services around them in that location, they are then able to um, talk about getting clean. They're able to talk about what going into detox could look like. And we know statistically that they are far more likely to get off of drugs and to, and to get, get on with their lives in a, in a more productive way that is less harm for, harmful for uh, the broader society. So that is why I support safe injection sites. It has nothing to do with my preconceived notions. Thank you. Thank you. And up next is Dave Rowan. My favorite subject, injection sites. No thank you. It doesn't work. We can look at that all over the place. It just brings crime to the area. People use drugs outside. They deal drugs outside. Yeah, it may help them if they OD inside. They've got help right away. But like the government says, you know, if you want to get high, bring a friend. You got somebody to watch out for you. So that would be a lot cheaper. An injection site, if you don't know, is $400,000 to start up half a million dollars a year to run. And me personally, I don't want that to come out of anybody's pocket. I'd like to see all that money, if we're gonna do this, put the money towards our kids. I'd like to see the Target store out at the mall, brought, bring that up, get in laser tag, jungle gym, trampoline park, rock climbing walls, anything for the kids to come and do for free from the age of seven to 17. When they're, instead of being out on the street in amongst the drugs and the crime, it gives them something to do after school, weekends, early evenings, anything. Like I say, it's about the kids, and they are our future. And if we can get them away from the drugs and the crime, maybe it'll be better for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. So we go to a different question, because again, we, we have teams of three, and so every time there'll be a team of two. That's how random works. So for the next question, and we're voted right up there, which was a great question, or a big question last week as well. With the growing population, traffic has increased on the aerial route of Veta Road. As councillor, or as mayor tonight, what is your vision for Chilliwack's transportation infrastructure and how do you plan to increase pedestrian and cyclist safety? And first up is incumbent mayor, Sharon Gates. Thank you very much, and that's a, a great question that we talk about all the time around the council table. So there are some changes, first of all, that are coming to the road structure on Vetter Road. We are going to be, first of all, we were able to uh, accommodate, we were able to get some property from our Aboriginal neighbours right on the corner of Watson Road and on Vetter Road, and we will be fixing that intersection. So you'll be able to turn, it'll be way safer, it'll be safer for kids, it'll be safer for families. Uh, we are also then going up off a of Promontory Road and we are going to widen that to four lanes just past that intersection at Promontory Lake Estates. We were able to buy land from our Aboriginal neighbours again. It took 20 years to get one of those pieces of land and to negotiate it in order to, to widen the road. We will then widen the road all the way from Watson down to Keith Wilson to four lanes. And I think that's really going, I know that is really going to help with the congestion. But we're not just working on roads. Roads are really important. We're doing more improvements as you see on Evans Road now. I hope you saw the new traffic light that is finally working down at Evans Court. And we are working to uh, make that infrastructure stronger. But we're also working on busing. We're, we have, when I came on, we had one bus an hour. Now it's every 15 minutes. We have buses that go to Abbotsford and Langley, and we need to keep working on our bike trails, and that's coming a long, long way, so I intend to increase it. Thank you. And next up is Ken Popoff. 
And I'm going to go <clears throat> a little east of that. Um, Promontory Road, we have begun uh, the widening process with, with uh, uh, buying up land along each side. If I become mayor, I'm gonna fast track that. And, and we have now purchased properties to, to put in another roundabout, uh, Chilwak Central and Press Road. Roundabouts work, they keep traffic moving. I think they're a great, great thing. And they're also safe. The, the data shows that they are the, the safest way besides traffic lights. <clears throat> as far as the cycling issue goes, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the, uh, the uh, um, cantilever that's now going over the BC Hydro, that, that's or attached to the BC Hydro rail line is going to go over Highway 1. That's going to let or enable cyclists to go north and south and, and come from Airport Road and go all the way down to the Rotary Trail if, if, that's, their, if that's their desire. I'm not a part of the cycling uh, group or the, the cycling family, but keeping everybody uh, uh, fresh and clean and exercise, I think it's a great thing. My biggest one is 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 a press road. I know it's been a uh, angst with with everybody up there with the uh, the amount of uh, uh, population that we have up there, and, and we need to move people safely on both arterials. As the mayor has stated, primary road is getting worked on, press road is getting worked on. And I want to go up on the up, up on the hillside, so up the rural hero sides, up towards uh, uh, Ryder Lake and into Greendale. We need to do some more re road rehabbing up there as well. So that is part of my platform as well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and finally, Brigida. My understanding is that Vetter cannot be widened. Um, I agree that we also need a roundabout there. Evans Road is used this way already, and uh, the route on Prest is being talked about right now. Um, I, want to, I want to continue to improve transit in the region and encourage people to leave their cars and take the buses. I consistently hear that buses don't run early enough, for, um, especially for people that work shift work, like at the hospital, and uh, they don't run late enough either. So visiting for family when they're either in Chilliwack or even if they're out when we have the Route 66 bus, I believe that they're wanting it to be extended. Uh, traffic is also something to keep in mind when considering rezoning and lot filling. Um, adding coach houses in some areas in Sardis and Promontory may not be reasonable at this time based on the additional traffic that has been going in and out uh, until we have it fixed. So, Building higher density residences near the shopping centers in downtown make more sense at this time and those areas are better serviced by the existing transit routes. Thank you. Thank you. So just a quick thing before we go to round three. So we get two more general questions. If you haven't voted them up yet, there's two questions that are leading. Those are the next two questions unless you change it. So if you online, which I believe uh, we've surpassed the local crowd online now. So if, um, or the crowd here, um, if you are voting, please vote the next two questions in the general room and then start getting ready for the, the actual candidate rooms. Those questions will be chosen randomly so we'll be choosing the candidate randomly, going into the room and picking the top question. So please do what you're doing. So let's go into round three. And our next question, I see it's gotten some votes since I... So our, last que our, our first question for our third round is a thriving downtown core, a topic that's getting a lot of discussion, is tantamount to a thriving local economy. How do you propose encouraging new business in this area and encouraging the people of Chilliwack to shop local? And first up, we have Ken Popov. Excellent. I, I'm glad I got that question. <clears throat> I am a small businessman. I, <clears throat> I, I operate a tire shop on Alexander Avenue. I employ eight employees. I've been in the downtown for the last 25 years, and I've seen its growth. Like I spoke earlier about what we are doing on the Five Corners four-acre site, is going to monumentally change the look of downtown Chilliwack. Uh, with 135 living units, retail, there's going to be some brew pubs, coffee shops, restaurants. I think that in itself is going to be something that, that is going to be a game changer. W with my time on the BIA, previous to my time on city council, well, I'm still on city council, but as, as, as president, we had talked about this for a long time, and it's, it's come to fruition. Uh, I know our mayor has been working on that as well, and, and it is something that, that is going to change, change the face of downtown. It'll be, a, 
it'll be a snowball effect, I believe. Uh, the Safeway site is another site that, that I think will, will, will come in behind it as well, and it'll be developed. We'll have a, uh, a, a, a couple blocks that are going to be redeveloped. The Paramount site is, is slated for uh, re redevelopment as well with uh, 44 affordable housing for our seniors along with um, community services and MCFD. Downtown Chilliwack is going to change in the next couple of years. I'm excited to see it. I want to be a part of it. Thank you. I just want to mention something quickly. There is, there is, there's been some people who've been asking about the, just talking in amongst the audience. I realize you want to share opinions and views, but let's be respectful of who's sitting around you as they listen to the candidates. They're not always all, you know, listening, or in terms of uh, making sure we can hear what they're saying. So let's respect the answering of those questions. And also up here, if you're conversing, your mics are all on. So just be careful of that as well. So, I was hoping um, you wouldn't tell them that. <laughs> up next is Dave Rowan. Well, what would I do to encourage new business around, or encourage new business in town? Yes, uh, I really don't know. I don't have the answer for that. I'm, I'm not on council. I'm not the mayor, so I don't know really a lot of what's going on. Like I said, I'm a tow truck driver. I see what's going on, but I don't know what everything is being planned. But to encourage more business and people to come downtown, I would like to see more stuff happen. Let it be coffee shops or little bars. Like I don't think we have too many bars in this town. I think there's only the Royal and the Legion left. And, uh, but uh, we have to encourage more people to come into the downtown core and that will help business thrive. And yeah, I would have to sit down with council and get together and figure out what we can do to do this because we need the community to thrive in our community. So um, that's all I got to say on that, sorry. Thank you. And up next is Brigida Crosby. Uh, for shopping local, that question? Same, same question. Okay. I would clean up the downtown as well. Um, we need to give business, business has suffered dramatically downtown and we need to give back to those businesses even my business was downtown. I actually closed mine as well, and a friend of mine, the chocolate shop, is also closed. So what you're needing to do is give business, they're going through this construction phase, you need to give them an incentive to stay because we've stayed long enough, right? Um, we also need to do, around Central School, there are some homes that should be coming down. We need to build uh, medium or middle, higher density places there just so we can have a little bit more eyes on the street that's really important there too, and it's going to make it a more uh, vibrant downtown for sure. I, I'm excited to see the, you know, the growth of what's going to happen downtown. I know that it's a beautiful plan. Um, I'm a little concerned about the senior building that's going up. I don't think it's enough. We need more, and that's all I really have to say. Thanks. Thank you. Before we move to the last question on this round, can I just have you give yourself a round of applause and also add home for the next question was not even remotely close to the top and now it is and it's gonna be a little bit of a, a different dynamic type of question so give yourselves a round of applause for doing that. This question worked its way up from the bottom and here we are for the last two candidates. We're developing at a rapid pace. Healthcare has been absent from the table when developments are approved. With an aging hospital and limited facilities, how will you ensure we have the infrastructure to provide care and recruit physicians? And first up is Sam Waddington. Awesome. It's a great question and, uh, and it's something that cuts to the core of what's really important for, for Chilliwack residents. These are the kind of services that we take for granted when they're done right uh, and we all notice them when they're done wrong. One thing that I think everyone in Chilliwack should be aware of is when you vote for your mayor and your council, um, we have four seats at the Fraser Valley Regional District Hospital Board. Um, and that classically goes to the mayor and the top three vote earning councillors. So I sit on the hospital board and I have for the last four years and we are sitting on massive capital reserves right now. So when we tell you that our ability to change health care provisions as, as they're delivered to you in our community, when we say that that's a provincial problem and there's nothing we can do about it, um, we're, not, we're not being transparent with you. We're not telling you that we have massive levers that we can pull. Um, we do control the capital funding side of things, not all of it. Operational is Fraser Health's mandate. However, it is a lot of money that we control. 
and without us, Fraser Health can't do what they need to do, and so we need to be a far greater player in that conversation. But the other half of the question is about attracting physicians. And other communities have done a really good job. Chilliwack has a 30%, over 30%, it's estimated, unattached rate, meaning that there's 30% of our population doesn't have a local physician. We need to do what we have to do to attract physicians because it is primary to quality of life in our community. Thank you. And incumbent Mayor Sharon Gates. Thank you, William. Well, the sweet thing about sitting on the Fraser Valley Regional Hospital District is that we are working with Abbotsford, Mission, Hope, and Chilliwack, of course, and we convince them to pay for our infrastructure, which is really kind of cool. An example of that is just a parking lot right behind uh, by the hospital where we needed extra space. Fraser Valley Regional District bought that, um, and Abbotsford paid for the majority of it. But we need to keep planning ahead. We put together our emergency ward. We raised $10 million for that, and that came from this community. We have a funding formula with the province that they pay for 60% of capital costs. We pay for 40. And we need to keep impressing upon them the needs that we have right here locally. We have some great services. We are the eye center for all of British Columbia. We have amazing doctors, but we need more for family doctors. And SEPCO, Chilliwack Economic Partners Corporation, has been working really hard to bring doctors into our community. And I understand this week they had some successes in that regard. Uh, I do also want to say that we have a brand new CEO of Fraser Health. Her name is Victoria Lee, and I'm hoping that she hears the requests of our community for more <clears throat> services. We need more mental health services. We need more detox services. And you know we really need a whole lot of services for our senior citizens. So thank you very much for that question. Thank you. So that's round three. Those are the general questions. So if you're still out there voting, please do. Um, we're going to now get into the questions, which are rooms on your Slido. And we will be randomly picking it. So it's going to take a little bit more clicking around to get there, but that'll give um, possibly the candidate a couple seconds to get their mind prepared as we go there. So we will be um, going into this. we picking the candidate that's going to go next. I'll jump into their room, and we're just going to grab the top question that's in that room at that time. So up first, we have Brigida Crosby. And the number one question is, let's just make sure it just jumped up at me. The number one question is why, and just quickly before we go into that, all the candidates, the questions we've asked, the six questions you've all answered, those are still fair game for you to answer if you haven't answered it in your sixth round. These questions are as well. If you haven't had city council experience and you want to speak to that, you can answer this question your way as well in round number six, okay? So that's where the sixth round is. So you, and you need to keep track of the question you want to answer. So Brigida, why should we vote for someone with no city council experience? What relative experience do you have from the private sector? I entered into the workforce at 15 years old and I am into my fourth decade consistently working more than 50 hours a week on average. I have picked up valuable and transferable skills from the private sector, both in healthcare and as a business owner. Some of what I bring to the table through nursing is communication skills. I am also able to listen to a variety of different people, what their needs and concerns are, and I am able to transfer that into finding what the right solution is for them. I also gained the ability to work within the provincial guidelines and structure to get a job done. I am the owner of multiple businesses. At one point, I directly managed a team of 60 women across Canada. I gained valuable leadership and, and human resource skills. I can work with a multitude of different people and personalities, and I bring them together to reach our goals. I have extensive experience sourcing merchandise, which, which is transferable to the city both in sourcing services as well as attracting business. I am skilled at planning and a budget for a large company and working within the budget to meet our end goal. In the first year of business, one of my companies was up for three awards with the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce and I had grossed just underneath $200,000 in a 700 square foot space. The city runs like a business, but as a business, it also runs like a living organ or, or ah, sorry, 
<laughs> I see my time coming up and I stop. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was watching the time and I was, I was trying to stay on time. But it is better than the bell, right? What's that? No. <laughs> Up next is Sam Waddington. And the question we have, you talk a lot about, you talk about changing a lot of things at City Hall. What do you feel has been the strongest attribute of the current council and mayor? Would you keep anything the same or do you want to change everything? Sam. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Um, no, of course I do not want to change everything. Um, but, it, but I think it requires more than just a little bit of tweaking. Uh, in my experience, I'm not calibrating what needs to change based on, um, based on what I've seen in our city council exclusively. I've also spoken to mayors and councillors uh, across our region, across the province, um, and in my role as the director of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities for the last two years, I've seen how municipalities work across Canada. And we are unique in a lot of ways, and often not in the right ways. Um, we are doing things like municipalities used to do in many other places, and they have modernized their approaches, they've modernized their, um, their engagement process with their community, their financial planning processes, um, their dissemination of information from City Hall, uh, their adoption of sustainability practices and environmental planning, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we do need to move forward on those files, but we have a good foundation. Make no mistake about that. Um, and one thing that I will say for, for this council is I'm very proud of the work that I've done, but it has not been in isolation. Um, we have great passion around the table, absolutely. Um, and, and that's really important, is building a great team on council. But, um, but I'm proud of the fact that we move forward with transit. I'm proud of the fact we move forward with cycling infrastructure and pedestrian infrastructure. Um, I think, think some of the things that we've done with the formation of new committees, uh, like public art committee uh, and better public engagement, have been really big successes for this council term. Thank you. And up next is Dave Rowan. And your number one question, and by the way, the, we're going to come back another round, so if there's another question you want voted up, they will all get another chance to speak to a specific question. Dave, you said that you were too busy with work to be involved in community activities. How then do you plan to have time to run your business and represent the city of Chilliwack as their mayor? Well, that's real simple. <laughs> too simple. I would shut my business down. I would do that for you people. And I, I want to work for the city, and my business can be put on hold. It uh, was built by me from scratch, and if I shut it down for four, eight, 12 years, and if I decide to go back to it again, I'm pretty sure I can build it up again by scratch. You know, it takes honesty, integrity, and helping the people. You know, I'm, I was there in my business to help them, and make things better for them, not hinder them on the side of the road, but to get out there, help get them back on their way. So I would definitely shut the business down. That would give me time to run the community and be more involved with the community. And of course, I would like to do that. I would rather spend time with you people than driving in my truck 10, 12 hours a day. That kind of gets boring after a while. And I'm pretty sure there's enough people in this city that will keep me on my toes and keep me going. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And up next is incumbent mayor Sharon Gates. And your number of question is, why did the city allow the homeless situation to get so advanced before acknowledging it? Yeah, so some of you will remember about 10 years ago, we had one homeless person. And when he went missing from down by the access center, I got lots of calls from people saying, do you know where he disappeared to? It's that short of a time. Now we have homeless people in our community and we counted 221 in the last count. We started counting homeless people with the Fraser Valley Regional District in 2011 and there were 111. The next count was in 2014 and there were 73. And I thought, wow, are we ever doing well? And I was so excited because of all the collaboration and working together. And then in 2017, we had a shock, 221. And so 
we did go to work. We lobbied the government. We weren't seeing a whole lot of success. I must tell you, I am nonpartisan. I am not liberal. I am not NDP. I am not green. I have to work with every party. But when the Premier got up at UBCM and said he had 2,200 units of housing, would you like them? I put my hand up and I went out and I asked for that housing for our community. Councillor Ken Popov also led the way in that. He was fearless in asking for the kind of supports we need when he worked with the team. I gathered the mayors together from the Fraser Valley. We went in to talk to the Minister of Housing, the Minister for Poverty Reduction, and the Minister for Mental Health and Drugs. And we got it um, 40, I'll go to my website because I'm gonna run out of time, SharonGates.com, and it'll tell you how many supports are coming to our community for the homeless. My hope is to end it. Thank you. And finally, we have Ken. Top rank question is, what is the most compelling difference between your platform and the incumbent mayors? After that nice compliment, I have to be nice, I guess. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but I have worked on that, yeah. No. <clears throat> I guess the most compelling difference between myself and our mayors is, is my ability to form partnerships through collaboration and the biggest example is with the Chilliwack Health and Communities that I've been a part of for the last four years. A, a greater emphasis on our Indigenous people that, that we have. There's nine bands that touch our borders. Um, our interaction with those folks in the last seven years has only been a couple, three times. I think that, that certainly needs to change. We need to work with these folks. You see these these guys on the street as well as you see regular people and I hate that us and them it's we it's always we I am a, a candidate <clears throat> that I want to support our seniors it is the largest group of the population that is growing look at the color of my hair I'm, I'm not I'm not far off that myself and I want to make sure that that they are not forgotten they are a piece of our history they have been there They've seen a lot of change, and I want to re respect w where they've been and where they're going. So I guess really my biggest difference is, is probably my, my collaboration that I'm able to do. Thank you. Thank you. So same round, we're going to do, again, specific questions. The random generator has told us that, Ken, you are up next. Go. So there we have it. Give us some examples of things that during your time on City Council you have disagreed with and how would you have changed things had you been in the mayor's seat at that time? Hmm. <laughs> this is a pressing question on Chilliwack's mind. <laughs> well, last council meeting, um, I have been a proponent of, of, of upping our, our recycling program to include glass. And, and again, that, that, that tends to go to our seniors population because uh, some drive, some, some don't drive, and, and they all want to be a part of the program. And um, b before the last meeting, we, they had to be able to get their glass recyclables to the recycling station. I didn't think I was right. I, I pushed and pushed. I pushed hard for that. And our last council meeting, we did uh, bring that up, and, and it is going to move forward. What I disagreed with was spending the $163,000 on, on new containers. I think every person, every household has some sort of a Tupperware container that they can bring to the curb and put into a truck. That was one thing that I fought against and, and the paper, they made it sound like that I wasn't in favor, but I wasn't favor, but um, you know, you win some, you lose one. I, I, I didn't lose that one because I still got the glass recycling, but I didn't see the, the expenditure of $163,000 necessary. That's what I opposed. Thank you. Thank you. And up next we have Dave Rowan. And the number one question is in the video interviews, so the Chamber of Commerce, I believe, and all, there are some other ones out there too, but the Chamber of Commerce specifically put out 
video interviews that were a part of the pre-show if you were live, so you've seen those, but they can also be seen on um, you know, all of our social media feeds, whatever their names are today. And, um, and at the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce, that's the videos they're referring to where the mayors individually answered questions. In those videos interviews, Dave, you reference you don't know a lot about our city or politics. I applaud you, the asker is saying that, for putting your name forward. However, what qualifications do you believe you have that will enable you to lead our city to prosperity? I can answer that with one word, common sense. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, two words, sorry. No, sure. Two words. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be one word. I guess you could probably put it together. Can you? <laughs> we'll put it tight. We'll put it tight. <laughs> Is that your answer? That is my answer, okay, sorry. Like you. I say, I, I don't know much about City Hall and what goes on there. Like I say, I sit behind a windshield a good 8 to 15 hours a day. But like I say, give me the chance, I'm going to figure it out. I've figured it out all my life. You know, I've been on, on my own since the age of 14. And, you know, I've done pretty good in my life. So I, I'm pretty darn sure I can figure it out. Thank you. Thank you. And up next, we have incumbent mayor Sharon Gates. And your top ranked question in your question room is, just barely, by about 10 votes, you have told us much of the homeless and crime problems are the responsibility of other levels of government to solve. Is the city responsible for any of the issues and what can be done that does not involve other levels of government? Well, unless there's criminals on council, no, we're not, re no, I'm kidding. What, what I have to say though, that is in fact, okay, so let's go to that if we can. Are we all right with doing that? No, you got the question. Okay. The question so is, you have told us much about the criminal responsibilities of the government. All right. So what is the city responsible for that other levels of government are not involved? Okay. Well, uh, I will come back to that other question because I think people want to hear it at some point. So. Uh, so what I do want to say, um, the timer is going on this the, question. Thank you. Can we start the clock because it's been a little bit of heckling. I don't think it's. We'll give you a little bit of time on this question. Yes. Thank you Go very ahead. much. So the first thing is that yes, the city can do things, and the city is doing things. First of all, the city has formed a task force, and we have put together the RCMP. We put together our bylaw enforcement officers, and we put together security to do sweeps of the streets every day and to go into the parks and find out if people are in there with um, warrants for their arrest and if they can direct them to homeless shelters and to places like that. But can the city do it on their own? Absolutely not. That's why I went to the Federation of Canadian Municipality and my resolution was a was one of four that was chosen for debate. And I asked the federal government to review their criteria for how communities are funded for homelessness. And I was able to get Chilliwack and other communities on the list. It hasn't been reviewed since 1991. It was, it was um, approved by 86% of the people that were there. I go into the federal government, I go into the provincial government, I knock on those doors. Give you five doors. more seconds. Sorry? Five more seconds. We started, oh, it. we started it over. Go ahead. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Thanks. I don't have a timer that goes below zero, so I had to start it back over. Thank you. So our next person up is Brigida Crosby, and the question for you, Brigida, is... What is more important to you? Balancing a budget with no debt, or providing social programs for housing, addiction, etc., the social issues? They are both important issues, but ultimately the budget is more important. Debt should only be incurred if it's a good investment. And uh, while we have hands-on and investing as peop in people is really important, and certainly socially, social programs, um, it's not going to give the city the biggest payback. Um, it would be reckless to incur debt over a social program. However, I would definitely be looking how, how, at how the misspending has been happening. Part of it would be the dike on Young Street that has been a sore spot for me because that has already cost us almost $1.3 million 
and there are 10 to 15 people with a lawsuit against the city because of it, because of devalued property values there. So I don't want to have to be spending money that we don't need to. I think that money should, should be towards children. I think that money should go to seniors programs and investing in our seniors. I think the seniors have suffered enough, don't you? Um, I know that Chilliwack has been made more for able-bodied people and not for people with disabilities, uh, walkers, uh, wheelchairs, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to make mention of the, the biggest thing that was on my mind and the, the thing that made me want to run for mayor was that uh, Matthew Jarvis had uh, died in his wheelchair on the train tracks on Broadway Street. And those train tracks were terrible. And the city should have a responsibility to make sure that all of its citizens are safe at all times. And so that was really important for me to, to mention tonight. So any money that I'm going to find in a budget is definitely going towards children and towards people with disability and our seniors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Sam Waddington for the next question. And that question is, Sam, can you please give us an example of a specific issue in town that you feel the voices of citizens were not heard in, and how would you have handled it differently, or how would you amend it under your watch? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, um, and, uh, and it's one of the, the major aspects in, in my platform, is talking about community engagement. And, and I think it's, it's not necessarily, and, and there are specifics uh, that I will get to, but, but I think it's more of the general approach of people feeling like they have access to City Hall, that their voice is being heard in the planning processes. We, uh, we do planning processes, for instance, for recreation programs, and we go speak to the soccer community and the basketball community and the, and the skating community and, and uh, the, the different user groups that use our facilities. And, and we don't put it out to a broad public um, ask, and, and we do this on our budget. When I first got on to, to City Council, we did first, second, and third reading of our budget all in one night, and, uh, and then it was passed. There was no opportunity. We normally have two individuals who come. One says, please don't raise my taxes, and one says, here are some ideas that, of things I would like to see implemented. The same people um, year after year. And, and I think that we could have done so much better, and we can do so much better. The budget is the cornerstone of what it is that enables us to do what we need to do for a community. So I pushed to have a public engagement process. We extended some of those timelines. We now do a little bit of an online survey. I would like to move to more of a Victoria model where you do open houses, where you bring people in, you speak about a value proposition around how your money is being spent. And that kind of engagement through all of our planning processes will make our city a better place. Thank you. So, we're a bit ahead of schedule. We have a little bit of time. Are you guys up for one more round of questions? Oh, no. <laughs> Are you up for one more round of questions? Let's go. Well, that's the debate. I think what we're going to do is we're going to stick to the individual questions. We had three rounds of general. So, if you have a slido.com out, go into each room and vote up the question. I'm going to give you 20, 30 seconds to do that. Don't go anywhere, but feel free to just stand up and stretch for a quick second. Yeah. Um, about one minute while those of you on technology are going to vote up those questions. And then after that, we're going to have closing rounds and our promise to be great poll. So just vote those questions up. I'll, we'll just counting down for about a minute or so, get some blood flowing and we got two more rounds.
working. No, oops, right. No, I'm on general. I'm going to switch it. Okay. So okay. our first person up is Dave Rowan. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, your current top question is, your platform mentions employing the homeless for the city instead of charging rent. In the shipping container complex, in the modular housing context, uh, complex, uh, you have a proposed building to house them. Will you be laying off existing city workers or raising taxes to pay for this? Well, I think we could uh, raise the money without doing either. If we took the wasteful spending on roundabout art and other stuff that goes on in this town, I'm pretty sure we can uh, start to develop some of this stuff. Like the roundabout art uh, on Evans Road, I'm pretty sure it cost a pretty penny. I think it was $43,000 for a few flowers that all we see is a stem when the trees are uh, in bloom. So money well spent there. But uh, yeah, let's, let's, thank you. But with money like that, we can build small things that will help the community, like in, in uh, shipping containers. Like I say, it's not expensive to get one of these things going, and by the time they're done and said, it's better looking than a trailer itself. So if we're gonna get the people off the street, I think this is a good way to go. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> so up next is Brigida Crosby. And your question is, and thank you, that only, I had about 20 votes earlier, now it's up in the 60s, so thank you. What are your plans for getting the homeless off the street? Okay, so Sharon's wrong with her numbers. Uh, four years ago, there was almost 200. I was on the street with them, and four years ago, I was homeless. So I didn't come out and say it because I was embarrassed and I was ashamed, but I had asked every single one of these incumbents, and that includes, that's all three of them, I'd ask them to come underneath the bridge and uh, talk to me underneath that bridge so that they had a better, better understanding. And not one of them showed up. Not one. And that set the tone for what you received the last four years. There is over your house or your homeless situation has grown by 203% in Chilliwack in three years. That's not even the four years, that's in three years. We have 221 by the last count and at least another 100 that are couch surfing, and that's the people they find. Because I will tell you, they didn't find me. I was uncountable. They did not even count me as being one of the homeless people four years ago, leaving my marriage after domestic violence, which is why I came back this year. Um, so helping the people on the, on the street, it would have cost far less. So your tax-paying dollars that you spent uh, with the homeless on the street, you would have saved 54 cents on the dollar between policing, bylaws, and cleaning up the street. So you would have saved money by doing the right thing. And that's all that needed to be done. My idea is to put them into a 24-hour drop-in center. They will still go to Ruth and Naomi's for meals. They will still go to the Salvation Army. But if they are full, they are coming to the center and away from our streets and away and from your, your parts. Up. Thank you. And up next is incumbent mayor Sharon Gates. And your top question, which you probably have already, is explain SEPCO and its role in the city. Many people have voiced concern about its lack of financial trans transparency. Please explain the reasons for this and why we should trust that everything is on the up and up. Thank you. Uh, most cities have an economic development branch of the city and a particular staff member sits, waits for the phone to ring or chases down business to come into the city of Chilliwack. Some years ago when I first came on council, I think the mayor was uh, was uh, Mayor John Less and he pulled together Chilliwack Economic Partners Corporation and uh, tourism to come together along with the Chamber of Commerce and to put these ideas together. So what Chilliwack Economic Partners Corporation does, you as the citizens of the city of Chilliwack are the sole shareholders of SEPCO. One share and you own it. You pay $550,000 a year to support all of the business economic uh, transactions that happen. As you can well imagine in the city, when we're purchasing land, we don't want people to know what we're purchasing or suddenly the price skyrockets to astronomical proportions. Uh, SEPCO has been able to do some magnificent things 
with land and they are permitted under the law to not disclose when they are in those kind of negotiations with people. They purchased the entire Canada Education Park. That's why we have the Pacific Regional Training Facility for our RCMP, why we have the University of the Fraser Valley, why we have the Shooting Range, why we have JIBC. Those are a few of the projects that they've done. They're helping and us with redevelopment up. of the downtown as well. Thank you. Thank you. And up next is Sam Waddington. And your top question, which has also skyrocketed to the top in the last while, a team without trust isn't really a team. It's just a group of individuals working together. How will you as a leader help your team build the trust that it needs to flourish? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, and I think that, uh, that the role of a, of a mayor is, is different in every community. Every mayor seems to take the role on, on differently. But, um, but the strength of, of leadership really matters. The strength of mentorship absolutely matters. Because um, in this upcoming election, a new council is, is going to be at least 50% new members who have never sat on council before. Understanding the roles and commitments of committee obligations, um, how, to, how to bring an idea from conception through to implementation, all of these processes. And, and I can tell you that the number of one-on-one -on -one meetings that I've had with our mayor since I've been in council, I can count on one hand. And, and that's not effective governance. Um, you have to bring people together um, in, in, a more, uh, in a more transparent way, see beyond our differences. I'm sure that if I'm elected mayor, that there will be council members who I do not align with philosophically on, on certain issues but they were elected by you to serve this community and I will do everything that I can to help them to get the agendas that you elected them to do done and I'm not going to be a roadblock and those pieces of mentorship really, really matter and I think you build trust through people understanding that my best intentions are to serve this community as thoroughly as possible and give every single member of both our community and this council and our staff all the tools to do the best job necessary every day. Thank you. <clears throat> and up next is Ken Popov. There you go. And your next up question is, how will you prevent homeless migration from other municipalities if you build social housing for the current homeless in Chilliwack? Well, the short answer is, is you can't. <clears throat> um, every community has the same issue that we have. Um, I spoke to Dave that's in charge of Lookout. He, he's just uh, put together a, a house up in Hope for 30 of our most vulnerable people. What you see, what's coming to Chilliwack, um, we, are, we are building two supportive housing units of, of 46 each. The data shows that 70% that of the homeless in Chilliwack are from Chilliwack. So the, the remainder, the 30% 30, 30 is, is very fluid. They, they come and they go from here to Abbotsford to Mission and uh, you know, talking with uh, Tim at Salvation Army, he gets to know these folks and it's a, it's a tough one. Um, We've we've added a a, a, um, a inexpensive bus line from from here to Langley. I think it's like five bucks to go from community to community. I don't know if maybe that's the answer to to maybe control that a little bit. But um, the end of it is 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 you really can't control it. You can only manage it. And and in the upcoming months, um, it's what you're going to see in Chilliwack in early, early part of 19 is going to make a marked difference. But uh, yeah, that's a tough one, a tough one. Thank you. Our timer was just bugging out for a minute, but yeah, we're back. Happens, yeah. Thank you. So that brings us to the round of questions coming in from the audience. You've now asked, what is that, 18 questions that we have handled tonight. Uh, so six uh, questions around the first, and then you know we've had our three rounds of individual questions. Of those questions, and for this round, I, I ask you to stick to those questions, 
because you'll have a closing round of one minute where you can address your closing topic. But of those 16 questions, which one speaks to you? Which one do you want to speak to? Those are the top, sorry, 18 questions that Chilliwack has decided to, that those are big issues and those are questions that need to be addressed. One of those questions hopefully speaks to you as well and you have a, a viewpoint on that Chilliwack should hear about. So of those questions, is that a new team? Yeah. Okay. So we will, I'm going to ask you, you have the question, the way it works is you state the question, once you've stated the question you're going to be answering, then we start the timer. So up first is Ken Popov. Thank you. And I want to touch back on the redevelopment of downtown. Um, I know we've talked about in, in length about what is coming in the next couple of years, but I don't want to forget about who's been there, the businesses that have been there, and we've worked with them extensively. With my time on the BIA, uh, on the security side of the house, it's always been an issue, and that's, that is still ramping up through through maybe better lighting more more police patrol which is part of my platform i think we we need to work as a team i think everybody has to work work together sure the new stuff's coming in is going to be all nice and shiny and new but we just can't forget about the people that have been there you know um uh, Amber, you know, you know the book man. That's that's a place that's a, you know it's an iconic place downtown that 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 people come to from from far and wide. Bravo Restaurant, you know, it's a restaurant that you wouldn't think it would survive in that kind of a community, but it's 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 one of the top-rated restaurants in the valley. So it's proven things can survive in these tough times. We have to work alongside these folks, uh, city, police, security, the BIAs, and, and the chamber, and, and the city has a large role to play in this as well. I know on my street, Alexander Avenue, there is some development happening there, and it's, it's just cool to see Chilliwack grow as it's going, and, and I guess the main focus of what I'm saying is we can't forget about the people that have been here th thriving in business, and I'm so excited for what's just around the corner. Thank you. Thank you. And up next is incumbent mayor Sharon Gates. Thank you very much. Uh, what I want to say, first of all, some of you really will not like. I'm going to choose the question, a team without trust isn't really a team. It's just a group of individuals working together. How would you as a leader help your team build the trust that it needs to flourish? I need to tell you that trust is broken on City Council. And I know that Councillor Popov would agree with me, and every councillor that sits here today would agree that trust has been broken on our council. Healthy councils talk about these issues. What has happened is that a serious issue has been referred to the RCMP by our council, and you need to know about that. The issue that has been referred was referred by entire council as trustees of the public purse. They, uh, they said there would be a complete forensic audit of Sam Waddington's expenses. They also asked for a police investigation, not only for his expenses that were incurred in this term, but for his, I know, Boo is right. Okay, let's, let's be respectful for her time. Absolutely. You, I would boo too, but it's rude. So the thing is, the thing is, thank you. Okay, let's, so let's I be do respectful want to go of on. Sharon's time to answer the question, I do please. want to go on to say that uh, in terms, uh, not just in regard to the items that were brought up and the lies that were told to Councillor Stam in a public forum, the council agreed to send this off to forensic audit and to the RCMP for the entire term. This is a serious issue. It is not about overspending. Please do your homework and think about what it took for your council to make that decision and for the union to pull and support. Thank you. And up next is Sam Waddington. Thank you very much. Um, let's talk about our city. Um, 
so the question I wanted to, to, to touch base on, um, and I'm going to just stretch the parameters of this question, but it was about transportation infrastructure and making cycling and, and pedestrian activity safer in our community. But, but to do that, um, I, so I have chaired the Transportation Committee for the last three years and operated within kind of the constraints of how we normally do business. I think we've seen some pretty big steps forward. We've increased transit um, in a massive way, largest expansion to transit in Chowak's history over the last three years. Um, we're work, we implemented a cycle plan. We're currently implementing a pedestrian plan. All of those things are just coming online and we're about to see some awesome wins. But, but a big challenge in our infrastructure and in the way that Chilliwack funds a lot of things is we have this pay-as-you-go, no-debt philosophy. And it is very rare to see that in any other community. And that was one of the things that I, that I touched up base on earlier is to say, when we're the only community doing something, it might be because it is the best thing and we might be an outlier. Or it might be because lots of other communities have done their homework and decided that these are not the best ways to run a community. And so when we save money before we spend, it means that you, for instance, on certain projects have been paying into the public purse for 10 years before we build the asset that you've been paying for that entire time. And we build it at the end of that with inflated construction costs, with inflated land values, and ends up being a much more expensive project. And you didn't get to use it for the last 10 years. So on, on a lot of these things, I would like to look at actually spending money up front, paying for it over time, and it will be cheaper, and you get the asset up front. It's how every other community provides services for very good reasons. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And up next is Dave Rowan. Dave Rowan, you're up next. Well, I would like to touch uh, bases on uh, what Sam just talked about, uh, the infrastructure of transportation and our bike lanes. I think it's a great thing the city's been doing. It should have been done a long time ago, personally. But uh, I would like to focus on the area of the Annis Road up in uh, the Nixon Hill area. Right now, I do believe there's uh, at least 200 <coughs> houses going up in that neighborhood. So we've got to think real quick about what's going on with the traffic up and down that hill. So that would be a, a big thing for me to get on. Uh, bike lanes, awesome, I like it. But we do have to teach everybody that's out there how to use them. It's not right that we put these lanes in, spend all that money and paint these nice bicycles and arrows on them to show you what way to go but nobody rides in them, they ride in the middle of the road, stuff like that. So we need to fix that too, but uh, it is a great thing what the city is doing with that. And of course, education on how to ride your bike. Thank you. Thank you. And Brigida Crosby. I believe Sharon had a question on crime. There was a question was about a question crime, yes. Crime. Yeah, there was a question about us being the highest crime, but there was also how to reduce crime. I'm going to go for the high, or I'm going to do the reduce crime. Go ahead. Reduce crime. So um, at last count, the National Sex Offender Registry contained 43,217 names. Um, for every person in Canada, that is 800, or sorry, for every 813 people in Canada. So that means that Chilliwack and the surrounding areas, if we go by 100,000 people, we have about 123 convicted sexual offenders in Chilliwack, and they could live beside you because you will never know. You are not privy to that information. So I myself am looking to address that so that we can have it become more public, for, uh, certainly so city council or, or the mayor would know about that. Um, I would also like to advocate to be made aware when a sexual offender is discharged from prison and placed in housing in our city, which we have seen that happen. I will advocate to the provincial and federal, at a provincial and uh, federal level for tougher conditions upon relief, release from prison. So a lot of this crime, this is not based on just petty crime. These are serious crimes that have happened in Chilliwack. Um, we need to, if, if somebody's coming out of prison, if it's somebody that's committed murder and they have a curfew, we need to be on them. We need to have the proper level of staffing for the RCMP because if, if we're on them constantly, 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 they're going to leave. They're, they're going to get fed up. I would also like to make sure that the 24-hour center is open so that, for the homeless so that we can remove them off the street. And then there'll be absolutely no tolerance, none whatsoever, for them to be on our streets, in our parks, and by our businesses. And my time's up. Thank you. Thank you.
So that brings us to the end of the questions. And again, if you want to hear any of those answers again afterwards, there's always chilltv.ca where you can log in, where currently 600 people are viewing it live. Um, so thank you for that. And also participating in Slido and all that. So now, in the final round, before we get to our concluding remarks and a, a poll, is each candidate has one minute to kind of give us their closing remarks. And I want to thank everyone for, for bringing passion to the room. That's, that's what this is about, is about making and keeping Chilliwack a great place to live. We just have to remember to do that in a respectful way, that we all have passions. And thank you for doing that. And also, then we'll start with one minute going down alphabetical order, descending with Sam Waddington first. Thank you. And, uh, and thank you all again for coming. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, I love this process. I think it, it helps to inform a lot of what's happening in our community. But, but Chilliwack, we can do so much better than, than what we're doing. We, we have to modernize our approach. We have to uh, look to new solutions and, and, and come up with new ideas to guide this, this community forward. We have to deal with our housing challenges. We have to deal with our policing challenges. All of these things are going to take consistent work. And make no mistake, they didn't happen overnight. Things like a cycling plan didn't, cycling did not become important four years ago. Homelessness did not become important three years ago. These are symptoms of us not dealing with long range planning properly. Um, these are trends that we've watched wash over communities of our size throughout Canada. We should have seen these things coming. We can plan better. We can do much better, Chilliwack. Thank you. And Dave Rowan. Well, I definitely want to thank everybody out there on the computer and everybody in here. Thank you for coming and letting us talk to you. I don't want to sound like a politician, so I'll keep her real short and sweet. <laughs> just all I ask of all of you is, is just please get out and vote. It's your responsibility. And whoever you vote for, I really do hope they do the best possible. Because it's all about the community and the people that live in this town. Thank you. Thank you. Can I too want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, it's, it's, it's great to see such an engaged crowd here. I have the opportunity to offer a, a viable alternative to bring change, to challenge our assumptions. But we can do it without throwing out all the good that we have done, and we have done a lot of good. I build teams, I'm a team builder, I'm a collaborator. I want to work with communities, the First Nations, the seniors, the youth. I am a proven leader, I can do this job, and I do appreciate your time, and I hope you'll vote for me on October 20th. Thank you very much. Thank you. You come at Mayor Sharon Gates. Thank you, and thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you, Chill TV, for uh, videoing this, and I thank the Chamber for hosting it. Difficult questions, but healthy families talk. I want to tell you that we have a lot to be proud of in our community. Every day I meet people that tell us that we are the luckiest people of all to live in such a beautiful place. I have mayors and councillors all across the province tell me how much they admire what the city of Chilliwack is doing, and they ask us for advice. I mentor to many of them. I want to tell you as well that we have a great future ahead of us, excited about the redevelopment of downtown, the expansion of our RCMP, expansion of our transit systems, our trail systems, and our amenity space. I want to tell you that this is your community. You belong here, and we want to make this the best community that we can. Please vote for Sharon Gates on October 20th, and let's keep Chilliwack experienced and strong. Thank, Thank you. you. And Brigida Crosby. Senior citizens, people with disabilities, children, single parents, young families, homeless or not, LGBTQ, and all of us. We are all one people. In the end, that's what this election is about, the people. Do we participate in a politics of divide, or do we participate in a politics of hope? We cannot grow further apart. 
Hope in the face of difficulty, hope in the face of uncertainty. It is time for change, and it is time to change the tone of politics. War against disease, environment, pollution, war against poverty, but not war against each other. I respectfully ask that you vote for me, Brigitte Crosby. So that brings the debate part of the evening to a close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the poll, the last poll question, which I'll make live in a minute. So we have six, over 600 people watching live. Thank you. Please log in to Slido.com. We do have a problem. Slido only allows 1,000 people to log in. We got 500 plus here, 600 there. So first on, first on is the way it works. If you, if you uh, log on to Slido and participate in this poll, while the poll is being done, I'm not showing the results live while they're happening. I'm going to show the results after I do the thanks and then just before we leave. The poll is, if the election was held today, who would you vote for? So while you're voting that, and there is no result up there, so while you're doing that, I just want to give a few thanks and a few announcements, and then I'll show that. And make sure I get more than 500 people. Let's go for 1,000. I want to thank everybody for coming out. But first of all, a quick announcement. October 20 is the day that Chilliwack chooses. Today, there's a poll. That's not Chilliwack choosing. October 20, Chilliwack chooses who is going to be the mayor of Chilliwack and who's going to be our council. On that day, you get out and vote. I know some people have already voted. Yesterday was a pre-voting day, I believe, and there's one next week. Um, and then October 20, next week, Saturday, get out and vote. Polling stations are open 8 till 8, I believe. And at 7.30, Chill TV will be starting to stream live election results with a panel discussing the election and how this is going to play out for the next four years as we choose who is going to lead Chilliwack in the official capacity of mayor and council. So 7.30 next week Saturday on chilltv.ca. So first of all, I'd like to thank the sponsors. Thank the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce. Can I just give them a round of applause? I want to thank the Downtown Chilliwack Business Improvement Association. Let's give them a round of applause. And also thank chilltv.ca. And probably the, the ones I should have started with is I want to thank these six candidates for their passion. Five, sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm going for mayor, didn't you know? <laughs> I'm the undecided. So I want to thank these five candidates. William for, their... for mayor. Hey, what do you think, guys? <laughs> I want to thank them for their passion and their drive and their willingness to step up here and be vulnerable and do all the stuff that it takes to be a, big, a great leader. So I want to thank them. You already gave them a round of applause, but let's do it again. And obviously there's a lot more people. I'm up here, uh, Darren's up here, but I want to thank uh, especially Leanna Kemp, Executive Director of the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Kyle Williams, Executive Director of the Chilliwack BIA. Give him a round of applause as well. And then I want to thank definitely all my fellow servants, our President Darren Bosch, and all my fellow servants on the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce, but also I want to thank Laura and Taylor and Jess and Nicole for, for all the work you've done and everybody else for, for chipping in, doing your part. I just got to do this part. They did all the work. And so thank you very much for that. Thank you. And then last of all, I want to thank you for caring about Chilliwack enough to come out take two hours of your time. And uh, it was kind of ironic, someone just told me a story that their friends last night grabbed a bowl of popcorn and sat and watched last week's debate <laughs> for two and a half hours. What better passion and commitment is that? So I want to thank you for doing that. Thank you for coming out, engaging with, becoming informed, becoming informed voters, because those that's what's going to make Chilliwack and keep Chilliwack what our generations to come are going to be proud of. So thank you, and give yourselves a round of applause.
So I have 596, 599 people, and so I'm going to, okay, there we go, we're, we're up there. And I'm going to release those polls, and then I want to say thank you for coming out, and have a good night. Sorry. <coughs> Why? I, I think releasing the polls is, is inappropriate. Okay. okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay. I agree. Uh, like I said, I'm just, the, I'm just the face up here. So I've been told that I can't release those polls. <laughs> is that right? So we did those polls. I guess we can release them after the election is over. I don't know. That would be Pardon? swaying a vote would beforehand, be so I don't, I don't agree with that. Well, you know, the, the, the thought process behind it was we're an unbiased organization, and Ipsos Read Polling is an unbiased organization, and that's where, you know, those are the types of questions that are asked during polls. So thank you for coming out, and have a good night. Good of the 2018 Chilliwack mayoral all candidates debate. We hope your research tonight and through this election has paid off and you're a well-informed voter. On October 20th, go to the polls and then go to chilltv.ca and watch Chilliwack Chooses 2018. Complete election night coverage presented by Waterstone Law Group. Thank you and good night.